Hi, I'm Kite. And I'm Aaron. And I'm Timmy. And we're here to show you the revolutionary new kite guitar. It combines the beauty of just intonation with the freedom of an equal temperament. Chords sound cleaner thanks to high resolution tuning, which has more notes than a regular guitar. Today we'll explain why tuning has been such a thorny problem for centuries and how the kite guitar mostly solves this age old issue. And we'll explore how the kite guitar opens up new musical dimensions. The tuning issues that we'll cover apply to all sorts of instruments, not just guitars. The kite guitar is not some patented product. Anyone can make one. And we're sharing all our ideas freely and openly. The harmonic series. To understand tuning basics, we'll start with harmonics. Any vibrating string includes within it a whole set of pitches called a harmonic series. Here it is on low E on a standard guitar. Touching the string at a certain spot brings out one harmonic by dampening the others. The harmonic is still there in the open string whether I isolate it or not. I'll play the open string and touch it after. Can you hear this note inside this note? Here, I'll gradually fade in the open string. Each step of the harmonic series is different. It starts with the octave, then the fifth, the fourth, then thirds, they get smaller and smaller until they become seconds, and even smaller. When playing harmonics, it helps to use a pick, pick close to the bridge, and on electric guitar, use the bridge pickup. Distortion also helps. On most guitars, frets are placed according to 12-tone equal temperament, the standard tuning for modern Western music. But there's a problem. It's not quite in tune with the harmonics. Harmonics 4, 5, and 6 make a major chord. Here are the closest fretted notes. The fretted pitches are close, but notice the major third in the chord. That's harmonic five. The fretted note is slightly sharper than the harmonic. The difference is subtle and it's hard to hear through computer speakers. That's why we're using electric guitar today. Try this on your own. When a fourth is in tune, certain harmonics on one string match certain harmonics on the other. Oh, sorry. Uh, but if the interval is out of tune, you get interference beats. These are caused by the harmonics not exactly lining up. And then I listen to these to know how to tune. So you can listen to them go away as I tune the string back. That's the fourth. Let's look at a major third. You would think certain harmonics would coincide here too, but they don't. And when you play the two strings normally, you can still hear those interference beats. You know, it's understandable if you've never noticed this before. It's omnipresent, like the sound of a freeway when you've lived next to it for so long you don't hear it anymore. And this isn't about nut compensation or guitar setup. It's not even specific to guitar. This is a feature of 12-tone equal temperament. We can make the interference beats go away by detuning. Yeah. 
When all the harmonics line up like that, that's called just intonation, or J-I for short. It feels smooth and relaxed. We can play the same interval in standard tuning by using a string that we didn't detune, and that will feel more tense. So to do this uh, on your own guitar, flatten your B string by about 14 cents. Put the sweet third in a full G chord and it sounds great. So let's compare standard and just. Unfortunately, while a G chord is improved, detuning that one string makes most other chords much worse. Now the E chord has a bad fifth and a bad octave. So for the sake of these other chords, we have to settle for a rougher G to B interval. And that's why it's so hard to tune a guitar by ear. You can't get all the chords in tune at the same time. But on a kite guitar, it matches, the harmonics are much more close to the fretted notes. The fretted notes are closer to the harmonics. So. And that makes all the chords blend a lot better. By the way, the layout of a kite guitar is not the same as a standard guitar. It's usually tuned in all thirds. And we'll talk more about that later. So what about fourths and fifths? They're already quite good in standard tuning. On the kite guitar, they're even better, near perfect, assuming I've got my guitar at least pretty well in tune. Harmonic 7. So let's go further up the harmonic series. The next harmonic is the seventh one. By coincidence, harmonic seven actually is the seventh, but it's really flat of standard tuning. So some people hear it as out of tune at first. Let's add the harmonic seven to our G chord. We already detuned the B string by 14 cents. Next, detune the high E by 31 cents. This will really mess up the other chords. But now our G7 matches the harmonic series. Let's compare that with standard tuning. Notice how that rather flat seventh makes the chord smoother. So the dominant seventh chord in standard tuning feels tense because both the third and the seventh are out of tune with the harmonic series. And that is one reason why classical music theory teaches that dominant chords need to resolve to a simpler chord. And like the third, the seventh on the kite guitar is really well tuned. Oh, all right, head down here. And so that more relaxed seventh chord has less tension and less need to resolve.
but I can still play the, the cadence if I want to. Again, it can take some time to get used to that seventh. For a more traditional sound, you can stick to the intervals found among the first six harmonics. Harmonic seven has a more novel sound. Some people get used to that new sound right away, but if you still feel uncomfortable, just keep an open mind, it might grow on you. You can hear that seventh sound in barbershop harmony and some African music. It works particularly well in a blues context where it's normal for a dominant seventh chords not to resolve. Okay, so here's a good way to explore the harmonic seventh chord on a standard guitar. Get the E7 chord really in tune by detuning the second and third string. Then you can just slide that E7 shape up and down the fretboard. Okay, so I'm gonna take this shape, which is a familiar seven chord, and I'm gonna detune like this. There's the third, and here's the seventh. And there's a detuning by 14 cents and 31 cents there. Yeah. sound but it's kind of a one trick pony you just got this one shape and this one sort of chord and that's it so your options are pretty limited in terms of what to do with this uh, and make sure not to lift up your fourth finger <laughs> now there's other ways to access that nice blended seventh sound you could tune it to it all open strings and use a slide you could get the harmonic seven by going back a fret and bending up. So here's the tempered one and I can go back here. Each of these has certain limitations, but it's a great sound that lets you start exploring. And I really find there's something just almost peaceful and meditative about these nice J.I. chords. Distortion and Difference Tones. So here's a power chord in standard tuning. <laughs> Rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a power chord. Compare that to a major chord. Or a seventh chord. These two chords sound so dissonant because the distortion brings out the clashing harmonics. This is why hard rock often sticks to power chords. Octaves and fifths are well tuned, but thirds and sevenths aren't. Now that B tuning trick I just used a moment ago, that one lets you still work with distortion and it blends. Oh, let me go with an actual heavier distortion. Here we go.
So there's more going on than just harmonics. Playing any two notes at once creates what's called a difference tone. For example, 300 hertz and 200 hertz make a 100 hertz difference tone. These tones are present on all instruments. They're usually quite faint, but distortion really brings them out. Here's the low bass. It's the same as the low E string. Listen again. The low E is there, but I'm not playing it. The B string is harmonic three of that low E, and the high E string is harmonic four. The difference of three and four is one, so we get the first harmonic, the fundamental. So uh, check this out. I'm gonna play. With. Now check what happens when I play them together. So can you hear when my lower note goes up a second, my new bass line goes down a fourth. So if I go down an octave, the guitar can play notes outside of its range in the bass range. So because fourths and fifths on a standard guitar are so well tuned, like that's how this works so well. But thirds aren't so great, so they don't really work as well. Okay, so on the kite guitar, this is an electric version, six strings. Uh, thirds are actually pretty close to harmonics, so they can work with full distortion. And so I'm just playing two strings, and you basically hear the whole chord. So on a standard guitar with distortion, anything beyond power chords has a lot of jumbled out of tuneness. But on a kite guitar, I can play anything that fits the harmonic series. So here's harmonics five and seven at the same time. Well, I'll play them one at a time. Here they are. And together. And I get that difference tone in the whole rest of the harmonic series. And because it's the entire thing, if I play different parts of that same harmonic series on the guitar, it just emphasizes different parts of the mix. It's almost like a timbre change, kind of like a, a moving filter on a, some synth. Again, if you're still finding the seventh harmonic strange, you gotta admit, it makes the chord work better. The search. So I originally got into that sound, that blended seventh, from singing barbershop harmony. And I was looking for years for how to get that blended sound on a regular guitar. So I tried guitars with different partial frets and close frets that are like tuned to just intonation, but that's specific to a certain key. So even though chords can sound great, it, you can't really move around in different ways. I couldn't play a full arrangement. So that's why we have equal temperaments. They let you play in any key and modulate to any key. Standard 12 tone equal temperament divides the octave into 12 equal steps. Any equal division of the octave is called EDO or EDO for short. So 12 equal is also called 12 Edo. In an Edo, all intervals are the same in all keys. And that certainly has advantages. 
But with the best ones like 19 Edo and 22 Edo, those are close to JI, but some intervals are better than 12 and some are worse. And 31 is a pretty good one, but the fifth is noticeably flat. And it's a lot of frets, 31 frets kind of, uh, that's a little intimidating. Uh, and, you know, I ended up getting a fretless guitar and that is works great. You can play anything and I can get in tune. It's great for melodies. But it's really hard to play quick chord changes. So I thought what I wanted to do, play really blended barbershop chords on a guitar, was just impossible. There was just trade-offs no matter which way I looked. But this can do it. Here it is. Speaking of barbershop, give me that sweet, sweet harmony. How does the kite guitar accomplish all this? 